homage to all the vast hosts of victorious ones. I pay homage to the original protector, Samantha Bhadra. Flawless and totally pure like space. The deity of the Kayas and timeless awareness which do not come together or separate. The glory of both conditioned existence and the peace of Nirvana. For all beings in samsara, which is like an illusion. Clearly apparent without truly existing. Bound by their reifying perceptions as though in a dream. The ultimate meaning of great perfection is that they are by nature totally free. Previously, before me, there were neither Buddhas nor ordinary beings. How then could there be a path of accomplishment? There is not a single thing that does not come from me. I am supreme emptiness. The five elements develop from me. I am the great master of the elements. I am the ancestor of all Buddhas. Previously, before me, there was not even the name Buddha. I am the perfection of skillful means. Since I have no characteristics, my mind does not vacillate. I am the tomb of all Buddhas. They are buried in me the unchanging burial ground. I am the dwelling place of all ordinary beings. Their habitual patterns manifest as bodies. I am inalienable, sublime, knowing, outer, inner and secret are perfect in me. I am the embodiment of the Vajra 
heart essence. Buddhas are born from me. I am the ultimate meaning of unborn awareness. I am free of being a phenomenon with substance. Since I have no characteristics, I raise beings from the grave. Since innate responsiveness arises from me, I am beyond any talk of emptiness. Since what is to be illuminated comes from me, I illuminate the darkness. Because the kaya of perfect Buddhahood is pervasive, because of the undifferentiated state of suchness, and because of the birthright of all beings, they are forever endowed with Buddha nature. Within the essence of ultimate truth, there is no Buddha or ordinary being. Since awareness cannot be reified, it is empty. Given that it does not dwell in emptiness, it abides in its own state of supreme bliss. The majestic ruler of all Buddhas is understood to be one's own awareness. This monarch naturally manifest awareness is present in everyone but no one realizes it.
It is explained that the very pinnacle of all views is Ati, Great Perfection. Since it is spacious, it should be understood that the significance of its unlimited potential is that it is like space. The significance of its being vast and profound and therefore difficult to fathom is analogous to the depths of the great ocean. The significance of the light rays of lucidity gathering is understood to be analogous to the orb of the sun itself. Because it is free of conceptual limits, the secret mantra approach is said to be the most majestic of skillful means. Due to the sun of awareness rising within the realm of emptiness, the five unchanging kayas arise directly from the mandala of the great undiminishing treasure. They present a non-dual display within a non-conceptual state. On the level of truth, the five mind-body aggregates, without being deliberately structured, are revealed as a magical display of appearances, however they manifest. Three kayas are subsumed within me, the all creating one. All phenomena, however they manifest, have three uncontrived aspects nature, essence, and responsiveness. I reveal these three kayas to be my suchness.
awareness, difficult for anyone to realize, is subtle, hard to comprehend, and seen by no one. It cannot be reified but is equally present everywhere as the expanse of naturally occurring well-being. It arises as a display of samsara and nirvana within a continuous context. All phenomena are awakened mind, and to use a metaphor, the universal metaphor, their nature is like space, which is also the ultimate meaning of awakened mind. Space air, water, earth and fire. These five are the superb manifest aspect of the Buddhahood within awakened mind. The manifestations of the three planes of conditioned existence, the five paths and the six classes of beings are also the manifest aspect of Buddhahood, which is not affected by the consequences of karma. The three realms are timelessly the form, speech, and mind of enlightenment. And so, just as there is nothing in the entire universe, the universe of all appearances and possibilities, that does not abide within the realm of space, so too, the enormous scope of the vast expanse of awakened mind is such that Buddhas, ordinary beings and the entire universe are present therein.
everything that occurs, perceptions based on confusion, is my mind. Everything that abides, perceptions based on confusion, is my enlightened mind. Everything that manifests, perceptions based on confusion, is my enlightened form. Everything that is audible, perceptions based on confusion, is my enlightened speech. Ah, the all-creating monarch, teacher of teachers, arrays the heart essence as the mandala of enlightened form. However phenomena appear and remain, they are all arrayed within the realm of the unborn basic space of phenomena. Moreover, because there is no acceptance or rejection with regard to the ultimate meaning of this heart essence, I, the all-creating one, have also arrayed them. The all-creating monarch Teacher of teachers, arrays the heart essence as the mandala of enlightened speech. However phenomena are audible and endure, they are all arrayed through words as enlightened speech within the realm of unborn basic space. This essence is subsumed within indescribable enlightened speech. The all-creating monarch has also arrayed this. The all-creating monarch, teacher of teachers, arrays the heart essence as the mandala of awareness. All consciousness, all thoughts, whatever their content, one is aware of them as the ultimate meaning of the unborn, all-creating one. The enlightened form, speech and mind of me, the all-creating one, are the threefold mandala of resting without contrivance in genuine being. Not deliberately arranged, but perfect all at once. 
with this realization, one enters into the ultimate meaning of the spontaneously present heart essence. like dream images, like magical illusions, like mirages of castles in the air. Thus it is said, do things originate, thus do they endure, and thus are they destroyed. the all-encompassing state of infinite pervasiveness is the sublime ultimate meaning of the heart essence. Sense objects are perceived within the state of equalness and dissolve into the naturally occurring state. The meaning of boundlessness is experienced as that state of self-knowing and supremely blissful awareness. The manifestation of the essence of being is subsumed within the expanse of the kayas. The all-pervasive nature of being is a boundless manifestation within basic space. Inexhaustible, it occurs naturally, free of the limitations of elaboration. It is the infinitely pervasive nature of lucidity, the unity of basic space and awareness. 
It is beyond being an object, neither a creator nor something created. It displays itself in everything. The consummate, natural manifestation of spontaneous presence. The all-creating monarch, teacher of teachers, has uttered a prophecy to the authentic retinue. The way sensory appearances manifest leads one to a definitive conclusion concerning the uncontrived heart essence, the root of all phenomena. If one fathoms the ultimate meaning of the single nature of this heart essence, one realises that the nature of everything is subsumed within that all-creating one. Due to the nature of me, or creating enlightenment, the three kayas, the heart essence of all victorious ones, are naturally and spontaneously present without having to be sought. My uncontrived nature is ensured as Dharmakaya. My uncontrived essence as Sambhogakaya. And my fully evident responsiveness as Namanakaya. I do not reveal these three to be results ensured by being sought. The three kayas are subsumed within me, the all-creating one. All phenomena, however they manifest, have three uncontrived aspects. Nature, 
essence and responsiveness. I reveal these three kayas to be my suchness. Ordinary beings are truly Buddhas, but this fact is obscured by adventitious distortions. Once these are removed, truly there is Buddhahood. The ultimate meaning is expressed within a single awareness. The three kayas manifest as the essence of victorious ones. From the kayas occurs the miraculous expression of timeless awareness. There is neither manifest nor non-manifest. It is free of the extremes of realization and a lack of it. Illuminating timeless awareness abides as the essence of being. The elements are the embodiment of what is unsullied by conditions. Illuminating timeless awareness displays itself in everything totally free of spiritual paths, innumerable though they may be. Within the vast range of worlds, in a 3,000 fold universe, however many mandalas of enlightened form there are, they are all without exception clearly apparent as sensory appearances.
within the vast range of worlds in the 3,000 fold universe. However many mandalas of enlightened speech there are, they are all, without exception, revealed in what is audible. Within the vast range of worlds, in the 3,000 fold universe, however many mandalas of enlightened mind there are, they are all, without exception, pristine in light of realization. Enlightened form, speech, and Vajra mind from what is not manifest everything manifests Buddhahood is the Kaya's and the radiance of timeless awareness. Sensory appearances are present as awareness's own manifestations. Samantha Bhadra is self-knowing awareness. There is not a single thing that does not come from me. I am Samantha Bhadra. All that occurs. I am Samantha Bhadra, the guiding principle. There is not a single thing that I do not reveal. Different natures come from me. I am Samantha Bhadra, the nature of being. I am free of conventional designations. I am Samantha Bhadra, the state of oneness. The five aspects of supreme illumination are perfect in me. I am Samantha Bhadra, the supreme ruler. I bring about liberation into pure realms. I am Samantha Bhadra. The liberator. Whatever manifests is perfect within my mind. I am Samantha Bhadra. Realization.
however many beings there are, whether inferior, middling or superior. The Sugata has stated that they all come from the non-recognition of awareness. The root of the non-recognition of awareness without having to be examined is determined never to involve confusion. But none of this is perceived in any way by anyone. Moreover, with all the coarse elements naturally cleared away from the very beginning, there are no longer any realms of ordinary beings, for these are naturally cleared away. In the timeless, non-existence of one's body lies the awareness that it has never existed and never will. like a rope being perceived as a snake. From reification, so that things seem to be what they are not. Both the inanimate universe and the life it contains are formed. But upon examination, there is just a rope Timelessly, the universe is emptiness. The ultimate is expressed in the relative. The perception of the snake is convincing enough as a perception. 
but the perception of the rope is the valid one. For example, like a bird perched on high, the nature of the two levels of truth is such that the ordinary world is merely relative. It has no connection with what is authentic. Everything is free within the essence of the basic space of emptiness. I do not explain that there is some ultimately true phenomenon or higher plane. There is no confusion, nor is enlightenment attained by gaining realization on the path. Moreover, naturally occurring timeless awareness itself is free of the limitations of words. There is no Buddha, and who creates the fetters that bind? There is no name for, let alone the possibility of, confusion or non-recognition for any being. Therefore, since nothing has ever been freed, Freeing later on is a fallacy. For anyone who posits a goal when it is said that the path has no basis, liberation remains obscured precisely because of this supposition. Emptiness and lucidity, existence and non-existence, affirmation and negation, cause and effect. There are no such extremes as these four pairs of eight factors. This is analogous to the realm of space.
nothing binds, for there is no bondage, nor is there anything to be bound. With no bondage, there can be no total freedom. In order to teach the timelessly and spontaneously perfect Dharma, myriad emanations occur. mind is never subject to extremes. To whom can samsara and lower states of rebirth appear ever to have existed? Without true existence, like dreams, magical illusions and castles in the air, they are false appearances. It is impossible for them to have the impact of truth. Since Buddhahood does not exist, not even the name Buddha exists. Conditioned existence is just a label for phenomena thus imputed have been transcended. <laughs> 